Howdy friends, welcome to Ride Review. My name is Tyson and I've got a special treat for you today. We are reviewing the Radster Trail. This thing is awesome. If, you, you know, if you've uh, ever you know, liked Rad Power Bikes but wish they had something that was in between, you know, the Rad City and the, the Rad Rover, this is it. It is the perfect blend of both, you know, city utility and off-road adventuring capabilities. This is such a fun bike. I've been having a blast riding it so far. Very excited to do this review today because I think Rad has really done a fantastic job with this bike. Now, let me tell you a little bit about uh, Rad Power Bikes. Now, you've probably heard the name before. They're one of the most recognized names for electric bikes here in the United States, at least. They, you know, have tried to push into Europe in previous years, but have kind of dialed back from that to really focus on their operations here in the United States. Um, um, they've operate mostly direct to consumer, which means if you get one of these bikes, you're going to be assembling it yourself, most likely. You know, they do have some dealers, but uh, the DDC has really been their focus. Now, I have to say for uh, for this bike, the assembly manual was absolutely the best I've ever seen for an electric bike. I mean, absolutely crushed it. Full color, well written in English, has very detailed steps specific for this model, as opposed to being a generic one for all of their models. So, you know, kudos to Rad for like really crushing in that department. Like it really helps a lot because it, uh, it can be kind of hard to set these things up. You know, if you've never done it before, it can be kind of daunting, especially because they're pretty big, heavy bikes. Now, historically, the Rad Power Bikes name has been associated more with the you know, affordable segment of the market. They've had some of the most affordable electric bikes that you could get that were still decent quality. You know, there's always cheap stuff you can get at Walmart or Costco for 500 bucks, but you know, you get what you pay for. And so Rad has typically hovered around the, you know, 1500 to 2000 ish mark with bikes that are, you know, good quality for the money, but still, you know, not the most premium bikes out there. Well, this year, Rad is reinventing themselves in a big way because, you know, the, the price on this thing is 1999, so we're still pretty affordable, but this thing is packed with amazing componentry, uh, highlighted by their new Safe Shield battery, which we'll talk about in just a little bit here. So let's jump in with a just quick design overview of the Radster here. Now this does come in two different variants. There's the Radster Trail, which is the one that we have here. More powerful suspension fork, um, different tires. You know, these are knobby tires that will still do well on pavement, but are really, you know, leaning a little bit more towards you know, good grip and traction on the trail, puncture resistance and everything. Um, so if you get the city one, you know, you're going to have the slicks on there. The frame is just a little bit different. But this, uh, you know, this bike still does really well in the city, despite being the trail version. And it comes in two sizes too, which I love. Love. And uh, it, for people who, you know, want to really dial in their fit, uh, you know, I'm a tall rider here, six foot three. And so being able to get this big bike, this is the large version, obviously, I feel so comfortable on this. But if you're a little bit on the smaller side, you can go for the, I think it's just called the regular or the medium uh, that will fit, fit people, you know, down to as short as, you know, around five feet, I think. So that's a, that's a really nice touch that Rad has not done a lot in the past. Typically, they're more of a one size fits all. So love the sizing options. Now, uh, I have the, the standard version of this. There's more accessories you can get. You know, if you want to haul more cargo, they've got the bosses up front. You could add a basket up there. You can, you know, throw some panniers on there, some kind of a basket on the back, but you get the rack by default. And this thing is pretty sturdy. I mean, standard uh, weight capacity on here, 25 kilograms, about 55 pounds, real nice, sturdy uh, fenders, front and rear, full coverage on the back, not full coverage on the front. Uh, so your, you know, bottom bracket area is going to get uh, a little bit muddy here, but it's, you know, well covered and shielded. So not really that much of an issue. Hopefully it'll protect you decently uh, you know as the rider lights are included on here as well you've got a headlight up here 200 lumens on this light which is actually quite bright it's got a very nice spread I've done a little bit of night riding with it already and performed very well very bright tail light as well that's got turn signals built in we will fire these up so you can get a look at how bright they are in the daytime in just a bit when we run through the display but just to can kind of continue on with the rest of the bike design uh, you get a, a fairly forward ish like active seating stance on here you can adjust the handlebars back just a little bit uh, to kind of change that seating position but since there's not a whole lot of ride um, only so much you can do with it. I think it's put it at an awesome spot, honestly. Like I think they picked a good uh, handlebar for this, for the kind of more active riding that you might be doing if you are going to be going out and adventuring on some trails. It's such a such a good job with the the presentation, the fit and finish on this bike. Things are so cleanly integrated. Really nice, uh, you know, management of the cabling up here, and the battery does still stick out from the frame. But it's, I think they did a good job with it. Like it's a, a pretty clean design. It looks nice there. It's very easy to remove or to set back in there. Let's run through the electronics on here. The main attraction on this bike and on Red Power Bike's whole new lineup is the battery Safe Shield. They announced this, uh, I don't know, a month ago here. Uh, I'm gonna pop the battery out. So you turn the key here, it will pop out just a little bit. 
let you know it's unlocked and then boom there you go so that's very easy to get it out of there you know you can take it out with one hand it's still a two-stage removal thing so it is pretty secure in there and it uh, i haven't weighed this thing separately uh around 10 pounds or so uh, this is a 14.4 amp hour, 48 volts, you get 680-ish watt hours. Uh, so that's uh, kind of like medium to high capacity. Uh, but the, I mean, so on a bike like this with a torque sensor, which we'll talk like about in a bit, this is going to get you plenty of range. Like this is more than sufficient. But the, the best part about this is this whole safe shield thing. Now, Red Power Bikes has a lot more details about that on their website. But what it boils down to is that every cell in this battery is wrapped in like a heat resistant fire retardant resin so uh, so even if one cell happens to uh, malfunction and you know, catch on fire it will be prevented from spreading to other cells and then cascading into a you know entire battery fire it can really help to contain it really increases the safety here and they're also going above and beyond with uh, they've got the UL certifications for the battery and for the entire electrical system on the bike using uh, using high quality cells from either Samsung or LG so they're really you know doing everything they can and more to both comply with regulations for safety and to go above and beyond to make sure that these bikes are as safe as possible. Get this thing uh, snapped back in here. So just gotta make sure we got the bottom end. Put that in and click. Boom, there you go. It's super easy to work with. Good positioning here, nice down low on the down tube, which gives the bike a lower center of gravity. And the charge port is also positioned well. Actually, I think this might be a, a USB port. Let's see if I can <laughs> just cut my nails today. Use the key, get in here. I know this is the charge port, yep. And also this is a good position for it up high on the battery. Some bikes will have the charge port down here near the bottom bracket, uh, which is near the near the pedals. So if you, you're plugged in, you're charging here on the bike, and then you have to move the bike around a little bit, these can get tangled up in there. Uh, so it's uh, better to have it up here, less chance of you know getting that snagged on something and accidentally damaging the port or the cord. We can uh, you know, check the charge level on here. It's uh, <laughs> kind of hard to see in daylight, uh, but it's fully charged. So we got lots of riding to do today. Well, let's, uh, let's continue on with the rest of the electronics here. Rear motor, rear hub motor back here. Rad Power Bikes has been working to develop their own motors for quite a long time now. This is a 750 watt motor, fairly low profile too. Like it's, I mean, these 750 ones do tend to be fairly big, but not the biggest that I've seen here. It's very quiet, which is impressive. And I, I think the highlight about this motor is the torque on it. It has 100 newton meters of torque, which is quite high for a hub motor. You know, typically like 80 to 85 is kind of on the high end for what you see for these hub motors here. So you getting it getting it quiet uh, getting all that torque for hill climbing we're going to really put that to the test i don't have a ton of steep hills in my area but we'll throw this uh, at the steepest ones i can find okay let's uh, jump in here um and run through the the display and the controls here just kind of round out our electronics and now they've got a, a new everything new on here as well with the, the control pad the display all the lighting and signaling and stuff and i it's just it's so well dialed in guys let's uh, let's fire up the display and the first highlight is going to be the anti-theft, which is built in here. So you can see, uh, hopefully it'll show up on the, the camera screen here. The display is not super bright. Maybe some room for improvement there. Actually, you know what, if I take the cover off, that does that does help. A little bit easier to see. Um, but we're working with an uh, anti-theft system here with uh, NFC tags. You can use uh, you can unlock it by putting in the, the pin if you forgot your tags. But I did not forget my tag. Let me find it in my pocket here. Uh, so yeah, just this nice little uh, tag. I think you can pair your phone to use an, as an NFC lock as well. But I'm just using this. So you just stick that on there. Instantly unlocks. You get a nice display. Speed right in the center. There's your assist levels along the bottom. Battery charge along the top. You can see the lights are already on. They turn on automatically, but you can turn them off if you want to. Range, remaining estimate of 59 miles. I think it's 62 miles is the estimated max range for this. Uh, we're going to see what we can do today. I, I, you know, I'm not probably not going to ride 62 miles, but we're going to really push it towards the high end of the assist levels and so see what we can do there you can uh let's see you can press the mode button here and that'll switch over and show you you know trip time trip distance class level you can change this in here uh, anywhere from class one uh, to a class three which unlocks the maximum top speed 28 miles per hour which of course is how i'm riding i love to go fast See, we can uh, push mode again here. Come back out to our main thing. There's a lot of stuff you can do to configure this in the settings, but I'm not really gonna mess with that. Their manual has really good instructions on it, so I'm not gonna repeat it here. The, uh, let's see, you can you know, control your assist levels up and down uh, with the buttons on here. Turn signals, so this is uh, new and very well done for all of Rad's newest lineup here. So if we press the left one here, you get the indicator on there. 
and then that is active uh, back here. There's no front blinker, but there is a rear one, and it's actually bright enough that, you know, check that out. You can see it during the, in the daytime, and it's very bright at night. So I love having the turn signals on there. Good safety touch. You know, they do have a reminder on here that you should still be using your hand signals. You know, remember there's no signal on the front. You wanna make sure that people can still see you. Uh, the lights uh, on automatically here. Let's get a look at the front light. I mean, that thing's, that's pretty bright. You know, even the daytime helps people to see it. Uh, the brake light, here's the, the standard mode, and then it has a, a brake light activation. If I squeeze the brake levers, we get that brighter uh, brighter mode there. So again, very nice safety touch. Uh, really the only room for improvement on the lighting and signaling, you know, turn signals on the front would be awesome. There's some scooters that put the turn signals in the ends of the grips, which I'd love to see on a bike, but I don't think anyone's really done that yet. The only downside for the headlight here, if I turn this to the side, is that uh, there's no cutouts on the side of the headlight. So it, you don't see the illumination from the side. We also don't have reflective stripes in the sidewalls of the tires. You know, this is a, a good brighter tan in here, so that's gonna help out. We've got the reflectors and the spokes and everything, but a little bit of room to improve just for the, the side visibility. Coming back up to the cockpit here, the display is mounted low uh, down. You know, usually they stick up from the handlebars, but I actually kind of like this because it's it protects it and shields it a little bit. You know, it's, uh, things can't knock on it and snag up here. If you do wreck when you're on the trail, there's less chance that this is going to get damaged. So I think that's pretty good positioning for it. And then you've got the half grip twist throttle over here on the right. And so this combined with the torque sensor for pedaling, I think is really the, the sweet setup for you know, how you have your assist managed on an electric bike. The torque sensor is fun because it's very responsive, very engaging, and it encourages you getting more fitness. But uh, you know, if there's a day when you're, you're more tired and you need a little bit more help from the motor and the highest assist level is just not cutting it, then you can use the throttle. And now the throttle is, of course, speed capped at 20 miles per hour. If you wanna go the full 28, then you're gonna have to do some pedaling. Speaking of pedaling, the pedaling drivetrain on here is awesome. I mean, for the price of this bike, I was not expecting to see such premium components on here, but we've got a Shimano Acera. This is some of Shimano's better, you know, top shelf stuff. Turnies, kind of their lowest level uh, up above that is Altus, and then Acera is the next step up there. Really high performance here. These are pretty lightweight. Um, they hold up very well over time. And then the uh, cassette back here, this is a uh, 11 to 34 tooth. So that's a pretty big range and it's a cassette, which is higher quality. Typically on e-bikes, especially in this price, range you will see a freewheel lower quality and a smaller range of like 14 to 28 teeth which is just you're not great for uh for climbing steep hills or for going really fast this has you know <laughs> enough oomph on the high end with that really small 11 tooth and then you paired with the 52 tooth or i think it's a 50 tooth chain ring up on the front there so that you can go 28 miles very easily even in the lower assist levels the pedal assist sensor is built into the bottom bracket here you can't really see it from the outside but this is a torque sensor so uh, if you're not familiar with the different types of pedal assist sensors torque sensors measure how hard Hard you're pressing on the pedals. So you're pressing just a little bit, you get a little bit of a help, and if you really press hard, you get maximum assistance. The alternative to this is a cadence sensor, which only measures the pedals going around. So it's like, oh, it's going around, it's all or nothing, just a flat level of assist. Now the different sensors are good for you know, different styles of riding, but most people tend to prefer torque sensors. I, I do as well because they're they're more responsive, more engaging. You you press harder, you get more out of it. So it's a it, it's more of the kind of the natural uh, cycling experience, like riding a regular bike where you pedal harder to go faster, and it encourages a bit more fitness. And it's done really well on the Radster. You know, we'll we'll dive into this a lot in the ride test, but it's it's incredibly responsive. It feels smooth. It feels intuitive. They've really done a fantastic job. And uh, for shifting the gears, we've got a an upgrade on here as well with the uh, trigger shifters on here. A lot of Rad's models, maybe all of them in the past, have used the you know the thumb shifters, which get the job done, but just aren't as you know, aren't as satisfying. Don't feel as good. Don't perform as well. Love the trigger shifters. It's an eight-speed as well, so you've got a nice range. Okay, let's run through the rest of the components real quick here. The tires on here are not quite fat, kind of fat, you know, depending on who you ask what their definition of a fat tire is. 27.5 by three inches. This is honestly my favorite tire size. Like it's it's kind of a good balance of getting the extra float and comfort and stability of a fat tire, but it's still a little bit, uh, you know, nimble and agile. Still feels good on trails. You've got built-in puncture protection on here. That's nice knobby tread. We've got a suspension fork up front uh, with about 100 millimeters of travel on it. This is a pretty Pretty decent quality fork here. Uh, spring fork, you can adjust the preload. You, know, you can lock it out if you need to. 
So this is you know good for some trail adventuring and stuff. Not a you know not full downhill mountain bike, uh, but you know that's that's not what they're going for with the design here. We've got hydraulic disc brakes from Tektro. This is the classic HD E350, which means it's a hydraulic disc. You've got the 180 millimeter rotors up here. These are quality brakes. They perform very well for a bike this size. This is more than ample. What else do we got on here? You know, rear mounted kickstand back here. Good positioning for it because we can cycle the pedals backwards while it's on the kickstand. Nice for doing chain maintenance. The saddle's quite comfy too. You know, I haven't put in a ton of miles yet, but it feels good. It's a nice, uh, I don't know, a nice middle ground saddle here that provides some comfort uh, while still being fairly active. Also, the uh, the weight capacity on here is uh, 370 pounds, which is quite high for an electric bike. It's really sturdily built. Uh, they've also got a through axle on the front right up here instead of a quick release. And I, I love it that they have the through axle on here. It's more sturdy, helps you get that higher, you know, higher weight limit here, uh, especially for trails. It's good to have that extra strength. And that's actually kind of an anti-theft thing too. So when you have a quick release skewer on here, it's very easy to, you know, have somebody steal your tire. You have to make sure you lock your front <laughs> wheel up as well as locking the entire bike. And I just much rather have the through axle. Here we've got the puncture protection. So the chance that you're gonna have to be popping that off to do some trail maintenance is hopefully pretty minimal. Alrighty, time for my favorite part of the video. It is test ride time. Uh, so I've, uh, I've got the seat all the way up at the max height on here. Got the display fired on. We're going to start off uh, level zero, right at quote unquote, like a bike. I did want to just give you guys a, a sense for the, the fit on this bike here. Uh, reminder, this is the large size and I am six feet three inches tall. So if you're on the taller end of the spectrum like me, uh, this is this is what you're working with here. So I got, you know, not quite full leg extensions here pedaling, but close enough that it feels good. This does not hurt my knees to ride. I feel like this bike fits me. It's a you know, kind of a forward-ish riding position here, pretty active, uh, which again, I like, and especially for the trail bike, um, you know, I, I think that that is a, a good fit, have a little bit more of an active geometry. Okay, so yeah, we're in a level zero. I think, uh, yeah, the throttle is still live in zero, which I believe you can change in the settings if you want. So we're gonna kick it off here. Of course, I left it in the high gear, so let's get that shifted all the way down into first. And there we go. So I like to, you know, ride it with the assist off just to see how it feels riding it like a bike. It's also nice to know for if you run out of battery on accident, you know, you're way out in the boonies, have to pedal at home. And so far, so good. I mean, for how heavy this bike is, uh, about 78 pounds for the large version, it doesn't feel that heavy. Uh, it helps to have that uh, nice range on the cassette back here, so I, you know, I, can, I can pedal at uh, pretty good cadence here and get going, and it feels good. The suspension fork's definitely doing a nice job on this uh, on this road surface here. It's, it's kind of washboardy out here, so I do appreciate having that and the volume of air from the tires. And yet, without the electric assist, I'm already needing to shift up the gears. We're getting up a uh, 12, 15 mile per hour range. So pretty good experience, honestly, pedaling it without the assist. This is something you could do if uh, you know, you're know you wanting to get a bit more exercise, or maybe you're out with a ride with some friends who are just on their regular bikes, and you, know, you wanna go slow, go at their speed. This is a very stable platform too. Even though we're not going super fast here, pretty easy to ride no-handed. It's uh, You've got a good amount of trail in the geometry here, so it helps it be a little bit more stable. The tires are actually what uh, is a little bit loud on this bike. Uh, way more so than the motor, which you know, I guess we're not really using the motor yet. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and kick that up. We'll just put it into level one for now. And there's that little power readout in the top left of the display. You know, we're only activating it at around you know, between 60 and 100 watts in level one. This is, this is just enough power to make this feel like a regular bike, um, as opposed to, uh, you know, being very heavy. Um, so this is this is kind of a good uh, good mode to ride in for, I guess, like maximum exercise without, you know, pushing it too hard. And as we, you know, as we go up through the levels, then uh, the maximum power of the motor is gonna just go up for a little bit every level. We go up to two, we can see that the wattage output jumped. Now we're in like the two, 200 to 300-ish range, picking up speed pretty quickly too. And as we keep on you know, going up the levels here, three, we get a little bit more juice. It starts to feel really pretty peppy here by level three.
here we go. We got a little bit of a, a hill here so we can do our first hill climbing test. It's not uh, not super steep, but pretty steep for, uh, for over here in Fort Collins. And so I'm actually going to uh, try and go up a hill just on the throttle. So remember, this motor's got uh, 100 newton meters of torque, so this should be no problem, especially since we're close to a full charge on the battery. So let's just hit the throttle. And indeed, it has no problem. 10 miles per hour there. up to 15 and we are at the top of the hill well, that's pretty solid uh, hub motors uh, tend to uh, you know, they don't have nearly as much torque as you get on a mid-drive setup and also having the really big wheels on here with the 27.5 inch diameter that reduces the uh, mechanical advantage for the hub motor compared to like a, a smaller wheel uh, so it, when you factor in how big this bike is and how big i am pretty solid climbing performance there i'll see if i can find us something steeper to do that on as well and then of course you know as we go up even higher you know level four we can get a lot more juice i'm just going to go all the way up to five and then push hard on the pedals and we take off boom already up to 25 uh, lots of juice when you are when you're riding in level five mode um i don't know if this motor is uh, like how high it's actually peaking at. And one thing I noticed is that on the display, even when you're in level five, the little wattage readout in the top left there, it never, uh, it never goes above 750. You can see it's just kind of capped out there. It feels like it's higher than that. Like it's gotta be peaking up higher than that. And so that might just be a thing with the display. I'm going to see if I can show you uh, just the, the responsiveness of the, the pedal assist system here and also just how quiet the motor is. Uh, you, usually when I demo this, you can you can easily tell the delay between you know me starting to pedal and then the motor kicking in because it will uh, you, you'll be able to hear the motor when it actually kicks in. But it's kind of quiet on here, so uh, we'll, we'll see how this works. But what I'm going to be doing here is uh, I'll, I'll start out pedaling very slowly, so I'm not activating the torque sensor very much, and then I'll push hard so that you can see like how quickly it responds. I'll stop and start pedaling a few times so that you can see just how responsive this system is. Like I mentioned before, it is dialed in really well. All right, so starting off, I'm just going to be pushing really slow, uh, really lightly, and I am in level five, highest level. So just kind of barely cycling around here. You know, it's given me like 100 watts of assistance, just a little bit, and then I will start pedaling hard now. Instant acceleration. All right, let's slow down a little bit, and then I'm just gonna do a few quick starts and stops on the pedals here so you can hear the motor kick in. Really well done. Uh, when you're at the lower speeds, you can you, you can get like a, a half a revolution or maybe a full revolution on the pedals sometimes before it kicks in. So it's not as instant as you might get on, uh, you know, like if you've ever ridden the mid-drive systems from Bosch or something. Uh, that's about, uh, you know, the, the top of the line in terms of how quickly they respond. But this, you know, especially for a bike that's only $2,000, this is very well done. Let's do another run with the throttle here now that we're... Uh, you know, on more flat ground. I think we're actually going uphill just a little bit. Uh, but we're, we're gonna just take off on the throttle again, no pedaling. And there we are at 20 miles per hour, the top speed for the throttle. Uh, this is important for this to be a legal to ride electric bike in you know, various states in the United States. Throttle power is not supposed to exceed 20, but you know, of course, the pedal assist power can. Here is a look um, just at the, the, the seating position uh, as, as I'm pedaling, as I'm in motion here. So it, just a little bit forward, nice active stance, very comfortable. I mean, I love how this saddle feels. I love the big wide handlebars on the la large version of this bike as well. You know, this, uh, this really feels like it fits me being a big person. All right, we are switched over to the chest cam here because to really put this baby to the test, you know, we've got to do some riding on the trail. Can't do that uh, with only one hand. And one thing to note about this bike, even though it is, you know, it's, it's the Radster Trail, keep in mind you won't be able to ride it on all, uh, all mountain bike trails. Uh, because of the motor power being 750 watts and uh, because it has a throttle, uh, a lot of trails will only allow a class one e-bike. Uh, you know, no throttle, sometimes it'll even limit the power. So be sure to, you know, check those regular.
regulations before you take it on any of those trails. Uh, but we've got uh, we've got a few that uh, we can check out here. So let's uh, let's get to it. Uh, while we're on the way there, let's run through the pedal assist levels here. Now that I've uh, now that I've got both hands here, I can you know, put a little more into it. I'm going to drop it back down to level one. Start riding very tame i mean you, you barely notice it this is just enough power to kind of cancel out the weight of the bike a little bit level two is really where it starts to get fun and uh, you can actually you know get going pretty fast here actually let's uh go onto this straight away here i'm gonna really just push it in uh in power assist level two there we go past 20 miles per hour see if we can get all the way up to the top speed of 28. There's 25. 27. Not too shabby. We're actually going uphill a little bit there. So if you're if you're on that top speed, you know, level three and up, probably gonna be the sweet spot. Let's bump it up to three. And oh yeah, we got a lot more juice already. 25, 26. go 28 pretty easy to hit in level three a little brake test the brakes feel awesome i mean these these tectros are you know they're, they're solid they're on so many e-bikes now definitely a fan of how stable the radster feels at speed you know once you once you get up and going fast then having the bike weigh so much is actually an asset that gives you just a lot more stability Feels better if uh, you know you're hitting bumps and stuff. Um, but still, you know, managing to feel pretty agile, pretty nimble. Ooh, here we go. Jump on trail number one. A lot of gravel with uh, you know some random, <laughs> random uh, mixed terrain in here. Oh, this torque sensor feels great on this. Oh, we're out of trail. I forgot this doesn't go anywhere. Pretty good grip, even on the grass here. Bumped up to level five. I just want to see how fast I can take off uh, using the pedal assist here. So I got it down to what, like gear two or something. Pedal assist level five, and then right, let's take off. Oh yeah, speeding. And we're already up to max speed. Woohoo! And we got a trail here. Let's give it a whirl. I'm gonna actually drop it down to three. I'm just because the, you know, level five is honestly quite a lot, especially when you're on the trail here. And so what I like to do is I'll leave it in level three and then, you know, I can use the throttle if I'm ever like, oh, I want a little bit more. And I do want to comment on the responsiveness of the throttle as well. You know, people talk about a lot about uh, you know how responsive is the pedal assist throttle. Actually, pretty important. You know, there's some e-bikes where you you hit the throttle and you get a delay of anywhere from one to three seconds before you get anything out of the rear wheel. Not so on the trail here. You know, I like as soon as I hit that throttle, it immediately takes off, and that is true whether you're at a standstill or if you're in motion which again makes this more engaging to ride on the trail because I can you know, keep it in level three, be mostly using pedal assist. If I need a little extra juice, hit the throttle and just instant power on tap. All right, Let's see what we can do. Mixed terrain out here as well. There's some pretty uh, soft, you know, grass era, kind of like sandy spots as well. So we'll definitely be putting the traction on this uh, tires to the test here. obstacles in here. Actually, I haven't ridden through here on a full-size bike in a while. Look at how low-hanging some of these trees are. Ooh, here's a good test for the throttle. And we made it. <laughs> it's really a testament to the responsiveness of this so that I can just leave it in level three like that. And uh, I don't have to worry about fiddling with the electronics while I'm riding on a trail, or really while I'm riding anywhere. <laughs> All right. 
right, let's see what we got out here. I actually have not uh, ridden out here before. out a trail. I think I see it over here. Yeah, there we go. Whoop. Whoa! <laughs> the white handlebars are not quite so good there. Let's see, can we sneak under here? <laughs> you can definitely hear the chain bouncing around quite a bit. But it hasn't fallen off so far. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, we got some, some mud and some water there, so let's see how we did. And like I had mentioned earlier, this uh, getting pretty muddy down on the bottom side of the down tube there. But, you know, it's, it's protected pretty well. Uh, it's definitely, you know, definitely getting on my pants a little bit. So, you know, keep that in mind. Longer fender wouldn't be a bad idea up there. Rear one really does a good job. How are we doing here? We're uh, nine miles in and we're, uh, you know, we're still, what, like 80% battery here. So off to a strong start. Check the sign here. I haven't ridden over here. I want to make sure they don't, uh, looks like they don't say anything about uh, e-bikes, which is awesome. That means that we're probably good to go. I don't see anything over here. Okay, another new trail. There's so much exciting stuff out here. Uh, it's like this is actually not uh, not one we can ride on. So let's go this way. Pretty happy with the performance of the suspension fork so far. I am standing up on some of the rougher sections here, just since there's no rear suspension. So you know, suspension seat post might be a good idea if you're going to be doing a lot of extreme riding out here, but. Uh, I think the suspension fork really does a good job. Make sure you do, you know, adjust it for your weight so that it has you know, a good amount of give to it. Go this way. There we go. You can really get some rough terrain, practically in an old riverbed. <laughs> this is a this is maybe a little bit too much for the suspension. A lot of vibration coming through the handlebars. Oh, but hey, you know we made it. Okay, yeah. I just talked to the ranger, and apparently we're not supposed to ride out here in the natural trail. Regular bikes only. No e-bikes of any kind. Not even class one which is a bummer, but that's okay. So what we're gonna do instead is ride on the trail here and uh, we're gonna actually kick it all the way up into level five and do, you know, just kind of a little bit of a range test. Um, the, the little range estimator remaining does change, you know, for if, if you change the level here. So once we go all the way up to five, then it's like, oh, you've only got 15 miles left. We've done 10 so far. So, you know, 25 miles when you're really pushing it hard, but let's, uh, let's see how accurate that is. Just, uh, we're going through the town of Bellevue now. You can see the, the little corner store, which I don't think is open. It hasn't really been since the pandemic. 
uh, but it's a cool little town out here west of Fort Collins in the foothills. We are 15 miles in. Uh, we're down to 50%-ish on the old battery meter here. So we're going to try some really steep climbs and we're, we're really gonna push this bike. We'll see what it can do. A lot of bikes don't climb as well, you know, once they get down to really below 70%, especially 50% batteries when you can really start to see your power drop off. Feeling pretty strong here, honestly. It's a testament to the quality of the, the BMS here on the old Rad Power Bikes, uh, the Radster Trail. Uh, the BMS is the battery management system. And so, you know, when they're really well done, they, they, they distribute the power very evenly as the battery discharges. And, uh, and you don't see something called voltage sag. So you might have, uh, you might have seen this on other e-bikes and scooters and stuff where, you know, when you hit the throttle, the battery will drop. And then when you stop hitting the throttle, it goes back up. It makes it really difficult to know how much range you got left. And it can, you know, typically when you're seeing that, then the discharge is very uneven as you go, you know, deeper and deeper into that battery capacity. Not the case here. Rad has really done a nice job with it. So that even though I'm at 50% battery, it doesn't feel like it. I mean, I can, you know, <laughs> I can push hard here and take off, get up to max speed. And what feels like almost instantly, pretty effortlessly. We've got some pretty steep inclines coming up here. So uh, well, let's see how it does there. All right, we've got the first of two inclines here. This one is the shallower of the two. And we're just gonna do it on the throttle. You know, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna see what this motor can do. Down to 50% capacity here. Let's take it away. We're off to a good start, able to get going. Hub drive motors tend to, it's, they struggle the most with the start. Once you kind of get some momentum going, it's typically easier for them to maintain. We're up to 14 miles per hour. We're probably not gonna get much over this or even lose some steam. Yeah, we're, we're starting to drop down a little bit here. This really is, uh, I mean, we're, we're being mean to the motor here, right? Trying to climb a hill only on the throttle for a hub motor that is in such a large diameter wheel. I mean, that's a, that's really a worst case scenario and we're doing it, you know, we're, we're chugging up here, holding pretty steady at 14 miles per hour. These guys are probably gonna think we're cheating, zooming by them here like this. We'll, we'll, we'll pedal so that it looks like we're not, uh, <laughs> not, not fully in cheat mode. And actually, yeah, we're just gonna start pedaling here so we can get up a little bit more steam. And we're working up 18, 20 miles per hour here. Pretty easy pedaling in level five. Like I'm you know, going up here, I still don't feel like I'm doing all that much work. Yeah, here we are, cresting up to the top, right about 20 miles per hour. Now, the fun part. Uh, let's, uh, let's see how fast we can get going on this here downhill. Now is our chance to uh, you know, really use that gear eight. You know, we're, the motor just shut off because we're past 28 miles per hour, so now we're human power only. And man, these tires are loud on the asphalt. There is 38 miles per hour. And we are about out of downhill, so we've got going pretty fast, and man, it feels stable. I mean, rock solid, sturdy. I don't feel worried going that fast. Okay, coming up on hill number two, and I'm actually gonna pedal for this one. Uh, we're gonna shift it all the way down into level one, get up so we're properly on the incline, just to make it more challenging. But yeah, still in level five here, come to a stop and let's go. Shift up already. <laughs> this is too easy, man. I feel like I'm not even trying, already up to about 20 miles per hour. Great hill climbing capability. I mean, having that 100 new meters of torque, that's awesome. All right, let's do a you know, speed run. 28 already. We're topping out at about 34 here. Not enough of a downhill to build up much more speed, unfortunately. Oh, it feels so amazing at that speed. I mean, it's it's, it's just so stable, you know? It's a really, a really well-built bike. How are we doing on the range? Let's see, we're at 18 miles ridden so far. And it says we've got nine miles remaining. So I am going to start heading towards home now because we are kind of way out in the boonies compared to my home base. It's a 
nice little uphill section. I mean, look at that. We are just maintaining speed so effortlessly. I mean, you know, we dropped down one mile per hour, I guess. Okay, I, I might have spoke too soon there. <laughs> Only dropped down to 25, though. All right, uh, we we're kind of starting to scrape the bottom of the barrel here. We're uh, five miles remaining. We're down to about 25% left on the battery. And if you've been, uh, you know, paying attention as we've done this rain test, we're actually doing better. You know, we were at 21 miles ridden here, and the estimate for level five was 25. So we're, you know, we're actually doing pretty good. It's actually, uh, you know, it's not great on the battery to run it down to zero. We're not going to do that. But I did want to just see how the speed's performing now that we're at the lower level here. This is when, uh, you know, most uh, electric vehicles really start to show signs of slowing. So let's just hit the throttle, take off. <laughs> it's pretty good. I mean, this honestly feels like the performance when it was at, uh, you know, near full battery. There we are, we're up to 20 miles per hour. So, yeah, like I have said before, kudos to Rad Power Bikes for the battery management system on here. Great performance out of the battery. I mean, just really the electronics on this, incredibly well done. You know, if we start pedaling here, we can get up to that uh, 28 mile per hour speed, even though we're, you know, way down here at uh, low capacity. Okay, friends, that is it for today's review of the Radster Trail. I hope you guys had as much fun as I did. We rode about 21 miles, and I'm starting to feel sore now, but it's the good kind of sore. Like, my muscles are sore, but, you know, my back's not sore. I don't, uh, I, I don't feel any of the soreness that you get if you're riding a bike that doesn't fit you well. This one is just, it's dialed in. It's such a nice experience. And so if you wanted more range out of it, you know, if you're trying to get closer to that, uh, you know, 60 plus miles range, you're going to have to ride down in the lower levels of assist. But, uh, you know, riding level three, you could probably get, uh, you know, in, easily into the 40s which is a lot of range you know maybe more than you would want to do in a single ride so to sum up my thoughts on the Radster Trail here, this is hands down the best bike I've ever ridden from Rad Power Bikes, and honestly, the best bike I've ridden so far this year, especially for this price range. You know, if you wanted to spend a lot more money, then there's stuff with some more premium components, but why? You know, for $2,000, you'd be hard pressed to find something that does as well as the Radster Trail, especially if you want something that is kind of that hybrid of, a, you know, city utility and then off-road adventuring capabilities. And, you know, I have to really try to find anything negative to say about this this bike anything that I would say is you know nitpicky you know like it'd be nice to have some reflective striping in the sidewalls of the tires for a little bit better visibility but, you know it does a pretty good job you know, having the tan does help it to stand out already you know a derailleur guard would probably be nice uh, something to protect the derailleur the little cages they put on there but uh, you know you don't really need that it's kind of a nice to have thing can be nice if you're you know on the trails to keep from bonking that but the, since we have the Acera on here that higher quality derailleur it doesn't stick out as far as a you know, attorney or an Altus does so like, you don't need the derailleur guard nearly as much and uh, i mean what else you know the the front fender it would be nice to have a little bit more coverage on that just to you know a little bit better protection and coverage but uh, you know this still gets the job done you all this stuff is just pretty nitpicky you know this is a very well designed very well built bike it's so much fun to ride it can hit those class 3 speeds of 28 miles per hour easily and maintain them you got the throttle there so it's kind of the perfect balance the cadence sensor is really well done the motor's quiet the tires are awesome I mean this thing <laughs> it's great so uh, I, you know, I feel like I could go on saying good stuff about it all day but I'm gonna cut it off there I will be doing some more content with this bike so stay tuned and uh, you know if you have questions comments about this chime in down in the comments section let me know what you think you can also also find a link to the full written review over at ridereview.com we've got all the specs even more details you know everything i forgot to mention here some pictures of the bike as well so be sure to check that out thanks guys ride safe catch you in the next video